So you upload your videos to your phone. You've made them on your phone, whatever, you're out and about. And one of the things I know a lot of people struggle when they go backpacking or whatever is internet connections. Um, best advice is get Dropbox. And it'll all make sense in a minute uh, once it's finished because I know some people don't bother with the intros and outros they just want to upload and this is specifically for those people um, let's do that I don't want to auto upload the first thing you can do is set auto upload um, on Dropbox um, the, why is there an advantage to that if you set the phone up for example for my brother-in-law that does not know how to use computers or anything else he can record the videos and all he has to do is take the phone in the house and it will auto upload them into the Dropbox that's on my computer. So anything he videos, I get. Anything he photographs, I get. Um, and then I sit there and filter them out. But there's another advantage to that. Like I was saying, in the Philippines, internet connections are unreliable. Um, but you can go to SM Mall, they have free internet. You can find Wi-Fi about with different locations, restaurants, etc. So when you create your video and drop it into your Dropbox and set it to upload automatically, even if it doesn't upload it in the first place, say for example, right, I'm going out this morning, um, I'm going to meet up at a friend's house, and you've got their internet password or whatever, and you've got a video already on here. What happens is as soon as it finds a connection, it starts uploading. But then, like you leave that house, and the internet, the the upload still hasn't finished. But then you go to SM Mall, and SM Mall's got free internet, and you're already set up. So as soon as it connects, it it starts uploading it again. Um, to the point that when you're going around these places, it's uploading your files for you. And you're probably thinking, yeah, but it's on Dropbox. It's not on YouTube. Here, here's where the advantage is. Firstly, it's not sucking your internet dry at home because one of the things I have here in Spain is my 10 meg connection is actually about a 3 meg connection my upload speed is dire um, which is why Camtasia is pretty good at this um, I'll explain why now if I use things like um, Windows Movie Maker I find the files are pretty big uh, when I use Camtasia the file size are normally maxed out about 100 megabytes um, so they're not huge. If I use my phone for recording, you might see some high quality videos now and again. They come out at a couple of gig. They, so you imagine 100 megabytes and stick another zero on it. That is basically what you're looking at upwards. So, I mean, that, that that's great for when I'm in a cathedral or a historical building. But sitting like this, I really do not need it. Um, so... That's one of the advantages of things like Dropbox, because when you have these big files, as you're going out and about managing your own business, it's uploading every on every internet connection it can find. Once it's in Dropbox, there is software that will transfer it from Dropbox into your YouTube. Now, why would that be good? Because that software, like your Dropbox, are both on the internet. It's not using your computer anymore. It's not using your phone. It is taking it out of the Dropbox on the internet and uploading it straight into YouTube. So you can transfer it direct, which is very useful if you have poor internet because you can just like go, right, upload everything. And just like when you walk into a restaurant, it's starting to upload. Um, you don't have to tell it to upload because if you set it so it uploads everything, it will upload everything on your phone to Dropbox. Now, if you've got some stuff you don't want to share, I recommend not using that method <laughs> and actually selecting what you want to upload. Um, and I know, I know some people already think sexual stuff. I'm thinking more like copy of your driving license and that sort of information because um, some people some people keep smart copies um, on their, their phone. Uh, for example, I keep copies of certain documents for being stopped at a road checkpoint, for example, because um, I have originals, I have copies, but I also keep a backup for emergencies. Say, for example, I'm on the road, I've got my phone permanently in my pocket or on the dash, so I grab it if the van caught fire, but everything may burn in the van. I've got a smart copy. 
Um, so anyway, let's move over to that software. I, I might actually have to use this video to put in the software so that we can test it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go through, uh, through a couple of things. Um, this may actually be useful for people that use Dropbox on their desktop as well. Um, as you can see, I've made a little dummy file, which is actually uploaded in here. Um, test. But here's a couple of little interesting things that you may not be aware of while we're waiting for it to upload. If we go into Preferences. When you upload your files, they seem to take forever, but let's go into bandwidth. As you can see here, mine says upload, don't limit, because normally you'll find it limits to about 10 kilobytes, uh, which will take forever. The reason it does that is when you're doing emails and stuff, um, if it's not restricted, it can slow down your internet access because the whole software is trying not to be um, obtrusive. It's not like Microsoft that takes your internet over and then downloads its updates, making everything slow, and then tries to reboot your computer when you're trying to do something. It actually turns around and says, right, we'll just do this in the background as such, not take up too much bandwidth, etc. So just switch that, don't limit. Um, if you're using it on a desktop, I mean, I, that's what I do anyway, because I, I want it up as quick as possible. Um, the next one is enable LAN sync. This means that instead of going up into the net internet and back down, if you have videos on here, it will go, okay, they're on there. I'm going to transfer them to the desktop over the local internet, uh, the local network. It's not going to the internet. It's doing it inside your house, inside your restaurant, or where, wherever you are, where your desktop is and the computer is. only works on the network if they're both on there. Um, you know, if you're like at home and you have your smartphones and your um, uh, Dropbox on your desktop, it will sync it to your desktop without going out on the internet. So it doesn't affect your bandwidth out to the uh, internet, internet yonder. It only works inside the house. That's why this one is quite a useful one. Because I know sometimes if it's not enabled, what happens is it goes from your phone, out to the internet, then comes back down, and then you're going, why is the internet so slow? It's because it's uploading all your videos to the internet, you set it back down to your desktop. So those are a couple of useful things. And uh, let's see how far it's got. It's got four minutes left. Okay, so this is Box Connect. Uh, we're gonna connect it to Dropbox, but I could have done with it actually catching up with me. Okay, it's slowing down a bit. See, this is my internet speed in the in Spain. Look at it, 11 kilobytes. Horrendous. When I go to my parents, theirs uploads at 450. <laughs> All right, be back in a second once it catches up with it. Okay, so let's just upload anything. Uh, I think my son's already got a video he's done. So let's just click here, connect to your Dropbox, which I'll obviously be the Dropbox that you already have, whatever name you've given it. It's normally your email account that logs you in. There you go, there's one. Uh, changed four days ago, that'll do. So I selected this video. Then I'll click to YouTube. And I'll put it on my main video. So I'll select this account. Uh, you want to allow the connection. So you got to remember, you can upload, like say have your videos, like say you did 50 different videos on there. The advantage you got with the Dropbox is it will simply just go, dit, dit, dit. it will just keep uploading whenever it's got a connection. So you can sort of upload them. Uh, and then you just wait, wait for it. Um, like here, it says there's already 1.38 gigs ahead of mine. There you go. It's finished. It's uploaded that video already. Now we go to my YouTube channel. I just want to show it does actually work. 
Now, I don't want it auto posted, but it probably has, which is another reason I want to go to the channel, then remove it. Because people will be wondering, what's this crap? Well, it's not crap, it's just my kid. <laughs> it's, uh, but I know what people's views are. Oh, what's this? There you go, see? Email's already come through, it's already alive. It's already gone straight through. Uh, the, my channel. Ah, oh, video manager. Video manager, come on, come on. Slowly catching up. There you go. There it is. Um, it's currently set as private, so it's not visual. Um, it's like this one. This is relating to somebody called me a con artist and scammer. Um, it's set as private because it's still uploading that as well. But this is my point. These videos, once they're up and on the web, they're much easier to move into YouTube because it takes seconds. Now, I know some people like editing them in Movie Maker, etc. And I agree, it's it's a better presentation for most things. But at the same time, I know there's a lot of people that just want to upload for family. They just want to upload as and when they can get a connection. You know, for example, if I was at a waterfall site, I might actually just want to upload it. So people say, look, this is where I am today. And then later on, I might do an edited version with a bit more talking stuff on there about what I was doing and where it was. This is mainly for just getting it up on the net. But also bear in mind, if they're uploaded on your uh, Dropbox, if you manage to get a connection out, if you're in a remote area, if you lose your phone, you haven't lost your videos. All right, thanks for watching.